The media slamming former President Trump over his meeting back in 2018 with President Putin while praising President Biden ahead of his showdown with Shocker. the Russian leader. <laughs> White House aides are confident that this summit with Putin will be nothing like the last one the world watched with a U.S. president. Former President Trump, as we remember in Helsinki, uh, he clearly admired Putin, and Biden doesn't have any illusions about Putin, does he? I don't think he has any illusions about him. But isn't it great that the president is preparing for this meeting? Uh, because if you'll remember the last time Putin met with a, for a former president, President Trump was not prepared for that meeting. Under Trump, we had a bizarre relationship. We don't have that kind of weird cognitive dissonance uh, in dealing with Russia. What we have is a more adult relationship. Okay. That's, that's the way uh, Fareed Zakaria would characterize it, but that's how he gets up in the morning, criticizing Donald Trump. That's his entire show uh, still. But uh, pre they say that this. This guy, Glenn Johnson, who worked for uh, Secretary of State Kerry for four years, came out and said he's got a pre he's pretty sure how this is going to go. One thing about Vladimir Putin, he says he always shows up late. Number two is he always has got a rant. He will begin to lecture. One time he got lectured at a G20, he swore that never happened again. He will lecture everything, something about World War II or something goes back to the 1980s, or he'll pick out something that just happened. And he wants you on the receiving end of that lecture. Barack Obama wrote about that in his book as well. Well, it looks like they're opening the hatch. Uh, as uh, Putin arrives, let's uh, dial in Fox News contributor and media opinion columnist for The Hill, Joe Concha. Joe, good morning to you. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Thank you very much. Uh, summit day. Uh, listen, Joe, it, we just played a little soundbite uh, montage of various news outlets talking about, you know, the differences between uh, Trump and Putin and Biden and Putin. And I think what we're mm -hmm. learning is the mainstream media is Trump bad, Biden good. Oh, yeah. I mean, the difference in the coverage between the two U.S. summits uh, between Trump and Putin, Steve, is as different as the two countries themselves when you compare it to the coverage of Biden and Putin. And it's basically it's, it's blatant bias in broad daylight. And, and this isn't surprising in the least, of course, given what we saw going up until Election Day in contrasting coverage of Biden and Trump, the countless number of stories aimed at Trump, the fact checks of it being impossible that a vaccine would be available before 2020, or the Wuhan lab leak being a fringe conspiracy theory that wasn't, or the Russian bounty on U.S. troops that Trump allowed to happen, or the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop being the product of Russian disinformation. Again, it, all, it seems like a lot of this goes back to Russia when we should be keeping our eye on the ball with China. And I wonder if this would be, there would be so much media hype if this was a U.S. summit between, say, Biden and, and Xi Jinping, right? Or, or uh, perhaps, you know, anybody from China in general. Uh, but because it's Russia, we seem to have, we give this country this aura, like they're the, the old Soviet Union of the 1980s, and they're simply not. Uh, so, again, what I've said before is that we have to judge Joe Biden on his words and not on his deeds when covering him in situations like this. And during the Obama-Biden administration, a previous guest brought it up before, Russia was allowed to invade and take over Crimea without firing a shot, and the Obama-Biden administration basically stood by and did nothing. They allowed Russia to interfere in the 2016 election. Recently, the Nord Stream pipeline, that's that energy pipeline from Russia mm -hmm. to Germany, uh, was allowed to go forward without any sanctions being leveled whatsoever. So, again, base this president in Biden on his words, uh, I'm sorry, not on his words, because those are cheap, instead on his deeds, and his deeds with Vladimir Putin to this point have been limp. Okay. So if you look at the headlines, if you compare the headlines back in 2018 when President Trump met with Putin in Helsinki, this was Washington Post. Trump can't beat Putin at his own game. New York Times, just sitting down with Trump, Putin comes out ahead. Then these are the headlines now. With Biden's meeting, this is Politico, Biden disliked Putin before it was cool. The AP said, buoyed by allied summits, oh, Biden yeah. ready to take on Putin. Do you think he's strong enough to take on Putin, Joe? He hasn't taken on Putin in the past, so why should we believe that he will do that now? He may say some things, and we'll hear about the meeting afterwards, about all the tough talk, but again, you have to back that with action, like with Nord Stream, for example. And it's why you had Vladimir Putin, guys. He actually challenged Joe Biden to an open debate, mm -hmm. just something one-on-one -on -one where, where on they TV. could talk about this. And, of course, the White House on TV. And, and they could, and, you know, obviously, this was something that the White House turned down. But if Joe Biden did this joint presser with Vladimir Putin, that's what that was 
would become an open debate. And as we've seen with this president recently, uh, he did a press conference yesterday, called on five handpicked reporters, and he has to read from notes in order to give answers. Again, the reporters have to be handpicked because he's afraid of getting a question that will be remotely challenging. You take this president out of a teleprompter, and he has to speak extemporaneously, and things don't go well. Vladimir Putin, on the other hand, uh, seems very confident in his arguments, even if they are lies, even if it is propaganda. <laughs> but that would have not gone well at all. Right. But then again, the alternative is to not do the joint presser and look weak in that regard. So it's a no-win right. situation yeah. here. And I agree with your previous guest. Maybe not do this summit at all right now, given everything that's going on between sure. Russia and the U.S., particularly with cyber attacks. Yeah, that was Michael Waltz. Uh, along with the President of the United States will be the Secretary of State, the Security Advisor, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, as well as Victoria Newland, who's uh, with Political Affairs. Here comes uh, Mr. Putin down the gangplank. Right. Uh, easy to see. Easy to sponsor. Uh, sponsor uh, to spot, spot that. Uh, spot that saunter. Uh, Eric Green will be there, the director of Russian relations. What I think is also interesting is not only has Vladimir Putin's behavior been belligerent, so is his actions. One thing he just did is uh, sell uh, the Iranians a sophisticated anti-missile satellite system. I mean, that's exactly anti uh, uh, in Israel's face. And that's in our face as we're looking to for somehow beg, beg our way back into that deal. But that's not to anyone's advantage. It Except doesn't seem Iran. so, and I'd like to see. I'd like to see Mr. Biden asked about that particular deal. And, and look, you made the point before. Here is Vladimir Putin uh, showing up uh, decidedly late for this meeting, forcing the president of the United States to actually wait in the situation. <laughs> and Brian, you know this, watching enough heavyweight fights, uh, the challenger is forced to wait in the ring sometimes many minutes on end while the champ takes his time coming out because that that's that's the impression that Putin is the more powerful one right. here. You're going to wait for me, Mr. President. Optics mean a lot here, guys. And speaking of the optics, uh, Joe, I, I know you were talking to the camera, but uh, when we saw Mr. Putin come down the stairs, he absolutely ran down the stairs, which when it comes to optics, when you think about Joe Biden and airplane stairs, sometimes not so easy for him. And so it's just one of those comparisons people are going to be making as Vladimir Putin's motorcade heads toward the big park in downtown Geneva. Yeah, it's supposed to, uh, according to the rundown, he's supposed to get there about 10 minutes after the hour. We're 18 minutes before the hour. I'm not sure if he's going to hit traffic. He's 45 minutes even late matters. already. Add 45 minutes to that. Joe, thank you so much. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. Have a good one, guys. Take you care. Bet. Thanks. Thank you. you.